Right, ladies and gentlemen, item four on the agenda is the um, planning application for proposed extension to the school. Um, as we've discussed over the past few meetings, that we thought it'd be a good idea to, to build a, a school hall. Beckington School, um, a small school in Somerset, um, has not very many children. We have between 70 and 75 at the moment, but numbers are increasing all the time because it's also a very popular school. When I first came here, we, we had about 30 on roll, and so you can see how much it's grown and, and wish we had ever-expanding walls and then we could take lots more children, but we don't. The project began in uh, 2000 when we realised that the government had offered seed capital, which was a grant available to schools, uh, which would match every pound we raise towards a building uh, with a pound of government money. And this gave us the opportunity to think, ask the architect to think about building a school hall in the grounds of the old garden. Evan, I don't know if you've um, got any uh, costings on the project at all. Yes, I have, Peter. I, I think, as you know, we've um, asked George Chedburn, the architect, to produce the, some drawings and that kind of thing. And he's come up with an estimate of, that he thinks he can probably build it for about £300,000. And if we go for a seed capital grant, which I think if the discussions with the LEA suggest is very possible, uh, then we would need to raise £150,000. The problem with the school at the moment is that we don't have a school hall. So therefore, if we want to do PE, which we do, we have to get a coach to come to the school and take us up to the village hall, which is half a mile away. It's a huge amount of time out of the school curriculum for these children. We also um, have had to uh, change the school over the years. When I first came here, there were two classrooms and the classroom in, to the rear of the school was actually the dining room. We've since made that into a classroom because of the children who are coming to attend. We now need classrooms that are the correct size for the amount of children that are coming here. Our classrooms are small, our office facilities are negligible, our storage is non-existent, so we need to provide all that for the school. First of all, we've got to get the money from the, from the LEA, and I think once we get that, it would probably a few months of planning, and I would hope that it would be September next year that we started building. What we realised is that when we talked to the LEA, that we couldn't just build a hall on its own. It had to be the whole of the concept plan, which included the staff building, the rooms, and the new third classroom we found that the, uh, that the costs began to escalate and before we knew where we were, we were looking at costs of near £600,000. It was decided at that stage that we could go ahead, but we would have to work in two phases. It is an incredibly huge project to think about building a hall and a classroom now. We weren't expecting that initially and everything else that's going to go with it. Sometimes I hold my breath and think, how on earth are we going to pay for this? But the governors, and especially Edmund, have remarkable faith and feel that there is, we will definitely find a way, no matter how, to, to raise this money. Right, um, for fundraising, I would like to suggest that we um, organise a May Ball. Um, I think we could get 400 people or thereabouts there. I think we could make quite a lot of money. Um, my intention would be made, would, I think we could make about 14, 15,000 pounds. And it really sets out the reasons for building the extension, some history about the school, and what the proposals are, how we propose to raise the money, and how much money we need to raise. By March 2003, we were able to go to the LEA with a request for another 110,000 pounds which would bring us up to the amount of money that we thought we would need at that stage, which was well over £600,000 by now. I did some very quick sums and reckoned that with a little bit of cutting of uh, one or two items from the project, we could settle on uh, a project cost, contract cost of £620,000. There was a meeting at Taunton then when we were able to decide that we could let the contract 
for £620,000 to Biggs. They were on site pretty quickly and during the course of the summer the, uh, a lot of work went into the initial foundations. It was an amazing um, work of laying 39 piles into the sand. That led to the erection of the steelwork uh, towards the uh, August, September. And once that was up, things really began to move very quickly indeed. And uh, the school was in fact finished in January 2004, about four years after we first had the initial concept. One of our biggest problems and worries was obtaining planning consent for the proposals. The design had to be very sympathetic to the fact that the existing school building is a listed building and it's located right in the middle, the historic part of the, of the village, uh, in a conservation area actually. We took um, an awful lot of trouble over the design of the building and had to spend more on materials to match in to the, the local vernacular and to, to come up with a design that's sympathetic to the surroundings. But I think that what we've achieved is something that, that all concerned should be really proud of. We thought we would ask um, a member of the royal family to open the hall and we were going to try and get uh, the Princess Royal. I have spoken to Lady Gas and she is going to let me know in the next few weeks whether the Princess Royal will be available to come. Well, I think I was amazed to hear that perhaps royalty would be coming to Beckington School. Um, but gradually I could see that arrangements were being put into place and that yes, it really was going to take place. I've heard that there might be a royal opening the school hall and I think that's a wonderful thing. I think it would be it would be a really good thing for the village and for the school to have royalty come and open the new school hall. It's just something for the whole community because everyone in the village could come along and watch or it would be really exciting whether it would actually happen or not, I'm not quite sure. Why don't you have the, the other people here? Don't you think so? And, and, and the children, and then, and then it'll be clear. Well. Um, no, I didn't expect royalty to turn up. Um, I did hear, uh, you know, heard something that um, royalty may um, be coming, but um, until I got here and seen her for myself, um, yeah, it's marvellous, wonderful news. The children and the people in the village of Beckington were thrilled that um, Princess Anne was coming to, to Beckington. They lined the streets outside the school um, and it was great for the children and, and the parents and everybody. I mean, it was, it was the first time royalty, in actual fact, um, had ever stopped in, in Beckington. I think Princess Anne was a really good representative for the royal family. Personally, I actually think she's the hard, hardest working royal anyway. But on that day, she turned up, she spoke to the children, she waved to the crowd, she was just really attentive to everything the children said, and all the children afterwards said how lovely she was. Um, not the princess in the tiara and the long dress, but they just it so enjoyed meeting her. And she just came down to their level and made it an enjoyable day for them. I thought Princess Anne on the day was absolutely wonderful. 
Um, she arrived at the school, she made a point of talking to everybody and made a point of being interested in what everybody was saying and I felt she really did her best in the two hours that she was here to get round the school and see as much of the school and the village and the community as she possibly could. She did a brilliant job. Um, yes, she was because um, um, she went round the whole school and, um, and she, she was nice to everybody. And stuff. Making. What are you making? Pink mice. Mm. As of what? Mm. Have you tasted one? Not yet. Mm. Do you say I haven't licked your fingers at all? <laughs> really? <laughs> She was really nice because she walked around with friends and shaking hands to everybody and saying hello to people. Um, this was originally a classroom and um, because we've got a new classroom we were able to convert this into a library and computer suites. Princess Anne flew on a helicopter from London to all the way to Beckington just to see the whole school and to drive up in a limo to the school. One of the nice things I thought about Princess Anne's visit was that she took time to speak to most of us and to the children. It was really, really sweet. Um, very warm, very informal um, and very happy to speak and um, be with all of us. She was very nice and kind and she waved lots and lots <laughs> <laughs> and she smiled a lot. To have your last one, but, um, the site manager if you like. version. <laughs> Before I do so, can I um, just congratulate everybody who's been involved in this extension. You really have worked hard for it and uh, it has been an, an astonishing achievement on your behalf to raise so much money to make it possible and I hope you are rightly proud of what you've achieved and above all I hope it fulfils all your ambitions for it as a building, although it may take a little while before you can work that one out. <laughs> Many congratulations to all of you. When I met Princess Anne, she shook hands with me. She shook hands with me because I gave her a present. Not quite. She had really smart clothes and long hair, brown long hair, and, and she waved a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she was very nice and kind, and she waved lots and lots, <laughs> and she smiled a lot. Well, what a brilliant day it was. Lovely weather. Yeah. I thought she looked rather nice myself. She was wonderful. And the way she talked to all the children when she went round, every, every single mm. child. Mm. The children's faces, you know, just watching her arrive. Mm. You know, she worked so hard, and she we already been somewhere else, and somewhere further to go, and she gave all that time and attention. But she didn't just whiz round no. people. She really <laughs> stopped and had a conversation. Yes, really personal. Mm. Yes, she seemed to listen, didn't she? To what you were saying, you enjoyed it. Full eye contact. Yeah. yeah, I think it was a lovely day, all the children. Absolutely lovely day. A day they'll remember for the rest of their lives. Absolutely.